So good morning guys and welcome to our Logic Policy System Iraqi webinar. Thank you all for joining us today as we discuss the changing the way you think about your network management. We always welcome your active participation in our events. So please do use the Q&A functionality and pose any questions that you'd like answered. We will be discussing these during and after the panel discussion. This is your session, so let's engage and let's answer your questions. Without further ado, I'm now going to hand over to Daniel Roberts, our host and moderator for today's session. Thank you very much, Kerry, and welcome to Claudia and Pi. Uh, it's really great to have you on the panel. As I said, we've um, been doing a little bit of prep. We've cheated and I've done some homework on both companies. And I really didn't know about Logic Carlos, but we are going to start with the rose amongst the thorns. And I'm going to introduce Pi first. But before we even get there, you know, the, the introduction email which everyone received to the invite of this webinar was quite specific. It said, worried about the impact of the petrol price. Avoid unnecessary trips by enabling your business with a secure, reliable, and fast Wi-Fi solution. Do more by using technology to the maximum. So there's a saying which says you should do something every day that scares you. Yesterday, I filled up my tank, and today I'm trying not to look at the ESCOM push notifications about where we are. I'm just going to live on the edge. And that's where we are from a South African perspective. And the market that we're talking to today the real breadbasket of the economy, small to medium businesses are dealing with these kind of challenges every single moment, keeping our doors open in the dark, out of the dark. And if you're not in the digital space, you're not in business. And that's what this team has come around to me and said, Daniel, we keep the doors open. So let's dive into who we've got talking to us and why we should be listening to them. And first, we'll st start with Paya. Thanks for giving us some time. Your title is Business Development Manager. What does that mean? Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. And uh, thanks for the question, Dan. Essentially, I am responsible for looking after service providers and partners within South Africa, as well as the African opcos. Um, rolling out managed services, bundling our solutions, and essentially enabling our partners to enable their end customers to um, reach their business outcomes. So everything that starts and ends with the partner uh, essentially sits with me from a Meraki perspective. So you're the, so you're the conduit for getting these new, new solutions out there. You work for Cisco, but you've got a Meraki bent. Is that correct? Yes, 100%. So Meraki is our cloud networking division of Cisco, um, and okay. I fall within uh, that business unit. Oh, brilliant. Okay, cool. So we're going to dive into that because when you talk Cisco to me, I think about places where Daniel should never go. You know, it's kind of in the back room and it, you're pulling wires together and you make magic happens, which enables applications. Is that kind of right where we are? You're going to show us something on that later. I'm going to show you the complete opposite of that, which is cloud networking, um, which awesome. takes away all of the pain of um, having those cables and, and people on site. So very exciting um, business unit to be working for within Cisco. Stunning. And why did you get into uh, assisting service providers and partner development? Why was that a particular career choice for you? So I essentially started my career within the ISP and SP space. Um, so I've always been passionate about enabling customers um, to fulfill their business outcomes. Now I just have the best of both worlds. I'm able to um, you know, assist partners in enabling their end customers reach their business outcomes um, with our cloud managed uh, solutions. Awesome, thank you very much. Claudia Busaka, uh, you're part of Logicala Sales Engine. You've been there for a while. What's the support structure like from such a big company? I mean, I joked earlier, I had to go and do some homework. You guys need marketing, dude. We need to know who you are. How big Thanks. is Logicalis around the world? Thanks, Daniel. Yeah, look, so Logicalis, you know, m most people only hear about it in South Africa or within whichever country that you're in. Um, Logicalis is over a few countries worldwide. We're in uh, the United States, England. We've got offices in Ireland, Spain, Portugal. Germany, wow. Australia. So massive global company. We're part of the data tech group. Um, 
and I mean, even when I joined uh, Logicalis, I thought also there was just the South African uh, portion of it. Um, and joining this company, you know, getting to know everyone that sits worldwide in this company and, and having access mm. to, to many different people from many different cultures is actually, it's really, really amazing to work with these different people. It must be quite um, intimidating once you got to open the curtains and see just how big it is. I think it's 27 countries. <clears throat> But you still get the support in South Africa and you still get access to everybody when you need them. We've seen that in the preparation here. Totally yeah. off East, before we talk about Logicalis, you're an F1 fan. Um, are you going to attend the South African F1 if they get it? Yeah, yeah, massive F1 fan. You know, and I think I, I actually made a joke with my friends. Um, you know, a, fr a very, very close friend of mine's parents actually live in Dubai. Um, and she's now paid for plane tickets to go to Dubai to watch the Formula One at the end of the year. And I made a joke with her saying that my Uber to Kai Lamy is going to be a lot cheaper than her plane ticket to Dubai <laughs> now that it's been announced. But I'm, ex I'm extremely excited, um, really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be great for South Africa. It's going to be great for the economy um, and great for the fans. I mean, first time back in, what's it, 30 years back in SA? Yeah. yeah. So really, um, really excited, excited for that. Too. What one thing is unique about Logicalis culture that we wouldn't know unless we worked there? You know, I think it comes down to everyone is so friendly and helpful. Um, you know, in a lot of companies, even companies I've worked for in the past, I think people get people get too scared almost <clears throat> to ask for help um, or too scared to reach out. And I think even if it's not in someone's direct line of work or even if someone has pretty much nothing to do with, with, with what function you're asking them to help with, Everyone is just really, really friendly and really, really always hoping, like, you know, give, trying to give a helping hand, trying to help and, and even go above and beyond what was asked of them. Um, you know, you ask one small thing and you get 10 massive things in return. I think that just just helps. It's, you know, that culture of helping and giving is actually, I think, what helps grow the business to what it is today. I'm glad. That sounds awesome. So you you are responsible for the SME market and, and for managed services. We're going to talk around a lot today. You speak passionately about this market. Why has it gripped you so tightly? Yeah, you know, look, and um, I've always been involved in in um, the SMB market within my previous uh, previous job and, and this current job. You know, now now I have access to pretty much both the, the enterprise network and the SMB network. But you know, since I was young, I've always been a fan of of understanding the IT networks and understanding the different market segments. Right. Um, and it's basically just about understanding the bigger picture of your IT infrastructure. Uh, there's a huge focus on the SMB market at the moment. Um, I think it's growing at an extremely fast pace, um, especially in South Africa. Guys try and support the SMB markets rather than the big enterprises or the big um, massive global global entities. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, the fast pace that the this SMB market is growing at it just shows the passion that the SMB business owners have um, and you know the, the guys are willing to do whatever it takes to make the SMB um, their small medium business a success um, mm -hmm. the guys are investing straight back into it and also again it's just about supporting your small medium businesses so you know, this small medium business market I think the passion that I see from especially the business owners and the guys that work for it is I think it's second to none Oh, that's nice. So we are aiming this discussion at them. Uh, who would you be speaking to? Give me a role or a title that we should be talking to today. Yeah. So uh, look, and I think this, I mean, especially within the small medium business, you're not going to have your CIO, COO, CFO, CCO. You're not going to have all of those roles. So someone that's in a really high up role within an SMB customer, um, a, an owner, a co-owner, um, even someone that started the business, a, a franchisee, franchisor, um, someone that you know, has this company, there's not massive amounts, hundreds and hundreds of staff members, but someone that has a, a controllable amount of staff, they know their staff name by name within their business. Um, they don't really have a, a dedicated IT support staff or a, you know, a dedicated team that sits and makes sure that network's running day in and day out. Um, but more someone that, you know, is running out of an office, they've got one or two, maybe even three office spaces uh, across the country um, looking to grow their business, especially. Oh, brilliant. Okay. And then, Pai, how did you fit into this? What is your role about this un this unraveling we're going to do today and Claudia's offering? What was your direct involvement in that, in your organization? 
So I think quite key in my role is, as I mentioned previously, is to enable our partners um, to enable their end customers to reach their business outcomes. Um, I think that's quite key specifically within the SMB market. Um, as Claudio has mentioned, you know, we, we find that most of the SMB um, uh, companies don't necessarily have the support structure or the, the dedicated IT teams to assist. So um, everything to do with taking this um, launch to market, bundling the correct products um, for the SMB space and, and hopefully, um, you know, assisting these end customers with their business outcomes. So we're looking at the, the people that are offering, say, retail services. They need to get the, the, the doors need to be open, but they can't rely on having this huge megalopolis IT team to look after it. So they've still got to worry about that. We want to take that, away, that worry away. Uh, these unique challenges faced by this market, what do you think the difference is from an enterprise, I've got 200 stores versus this kind of market where I've got 10 stores, what are the unique challenges that you are seeing that these folks are dealing with, Claudia, that these business folk are dealing with? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, especially, and like you mentioned, you've got a, a massive enterprise uh, organization or massive enterprise customer, which then looks at how are we going to link our 100 sites countrywide? How are we going to make sure that the whole store is on a massive ERP system? We've got thousands of employees. They have a massive dedicated IT team. Um, and especially, you know, it, it, at the end of the day, it comes back down to, to budgeting. And I think having those massive enterprise customers, you've got a massive budget for an IT team and a massive IT infrastructure. It's different with the mm -hmm. SMB market. You can't afford to have employed a whole dedicated team just to make sure your, your network connectivity is up and running every day and you know I so think you've got one guy who's looking after the network the application the point of sale um the email survey you, you've got this one poor frazzled oak who's never been on leave in his life or exactly. her life and she's looking after that and then if you overlay your your survey that you guys did sikimara in logicalis that that improved security was the biggest risk that these these uh, business owners were dealing with this this threat of cyber security is that a real threat or is that just made up for the the survey absolutely and i mean i'll actually just bring up the the slide right away so this was just um some of the results that we received so you know as you can see a combined communications networking security and internet uh provided as a managed services right so delivering on the smb priorities so Improved security, 59% of the results, and I mean, this was a, a Cisco survey um, of 500 SMB IT decision makers uh, at companies with 20 to 500 employees done in January 2020. Um, so it's 59, right in our space, eh? Exactly is, what mean, we're trying to target. Yeah. 100%. This is exactly what we're trying to target. Um, so SMB say that they would opt to purchase integrated solutions as a managed service for the following reasons. Number one, at 59% is improved security. And I mean, mm. your SMB customers will have some of them, depending what market they're in, if they're in uh, retail, if they're in um, selling housing, anything, even small law firms, they have a lot of uh, customer data that they need to protect. They have a lot of their yeah. own, maybe their own secret recipes that they're using to compete against their competitors. They need to have a secure network that's up and running. And I mean, to have a dedicated team to make sure that that's secure 24-7 costs a lot of money. Sure. that Those threat actors, I mean, we were doing something in October of Security Month, and it's a million dollars a minute we're looking at globally losing. So security is constantly changing. And in order to improve your security, it's got to be a full-time thing. So we're almost dedicating a salary to that or we're Absolutely. exposed. Wow, that's, that's a big thing. I really like what, the, what you're seeing in here. And better pricing is only coming in at third. Do you think that's a South African reality as well? As well or do you think pricing goes up in priority? Um, look, it's, it's, it's one of those things, and it's one of the things we struggled with, especially when, when trying to launch this. Um, and especially in South Africa, I think South Africans as a whole love the word free. Um, we, we love anything that comes free. And I think a lot of what people's uh, 
and then this talks in if you look at the, the top three for example so your improved security your better quality of service and your better pricing if you look mm -hmm. at three a lot of service providers within south africa will say here's your internet connection and here's a free router or free wi-fi access point for your business mm -hmm. and that's where it stops that quality mm -hmm. of service stops there mm -hmm. if you have something mm -hmm. that goes on yes you have your connectivity and you have your wireless but it pretty much stops there we're willing to help that with a better pricing model with better quality of service with improved managed services and then you've get you got the security component that comes with cisco meraki awesome well we're going to get into that i don't want to go too Absolutely. quickly through that uh, Pi, uh, um the the secure network with a reliable wi-fi can it really impact the cost of petrol or was that just my creativity to get people to our talk I love that you've asked that question because I actually filled up uh, this week and uh, I had to almost looked twice at the petrol uh, pump to to make sure that you know I wasn't being overcharged. Apparently, I wasn't. So, um, quite simply, one hundred percent, right? I think uh, the times that we faced over COVID, and everybody's heard this, um, you know, quite often with all of these webinars. But um, it really is a, a way in which we can enable people to work from anywhere, right? Not just a work from home solution, but essentially work from anywhere. And um, we're quite fortunate to have a hybrid um, uh, model uh, globally. So it didn't really matter whether you were on holiday or, or working from your home country, um, if you were an expat. So I think it's, it's quite key to have, um, you know, staff enabled to be able to work from anywhere and to be more productive, um, mm. regardless of whether they're in the office or not. That's a great segue in. Um, we've got um, a, a two questions that have come in the Q&A. And for our, uh, for our attendees, wherever you are, please feel free to use the Q&A. We've got two experts with us. They love to answer questions. Look at Pai. She's just waiting to answer your question. Please keep them coming through. I've got one from Emma who says she wants to adopt a hybrid working world, but we're really concerned about security risks. What security benefits does your connection have? So that's quite a technical um, um, question. I don't know, Pi, is that for you? Is that um, um, for um, our friend who seems to have disappeared, Claudia? No, all good. Happy to answer that. Thank you for the question, Emma. Um, I think what's quite key with the Meraki solution is we don't just provide an SD-WAN solution. Um, we provide a fully fledged security appliance with all of the security functionality. Um, enabling you to not only do SD-WAN, so it's not just an SD-WAN box, but a fully fledged firewall um, built into yeah. one, which gives you obviously the security functionality, but also saves you money because you're not purchasing a separate firewall to, uh, you know, a separate SD-WAN device. So I think from a security perspective, quite key, as you know, Cisco is, is um, you know, top of the Gartner quadrant from a security perspective. So uh, we make sure that all of our solutions are very secure. So that almost answers the second one. Karvin Kolani has asked, um, he runs a promotional company and would like to know how to improve their client's security, um, customer security database. I think if you've got it behind a firewall in a secure environment, just like you've answered it and keeping it in one unit so that your attack surface is, is um, um, all a, a contained, you can look after it quite well, hey? 100%. And, you know, with Meraki, we, um, our motto is simplify everything, right? So specifically to the SMB business, we, we, you don't need to be a CCIE uh, or a Cisco boffin and employ these solutions and, and proactively monitor your, uh, your networks. It is quite simply, um, uh, it is quite simple to deploy. Oh, that's brilliant. Uh, that simplify and a simple deployment must be helping Claudio in our big release, which is coming. We're not jumping the gun. We're <laughs> not jumping the gun. Uh, so, Claudio, we've got security. We've got price. We've got complexity of solution. These these challenges all impact people like and Nataba Singh and, and, um, and myself as a small business owner and, you know, the small retailers. Are these people still seeing IT as an enabler? No, I, I really, I couldn't agree more. And I think, especially within our segment, IT is continually growing. It, it has not stopped growing over the last, ever since it was invented. Um, 
I really think customers need to to focus a lot on their IT. It enables their workspace. It enables their customers. It enables their staff. It enables even feedback around their customers. So, um, especially with Meraki Managed Services, there's so many different types of of benefits that you get, and we'll look into that uh, later, a little bit later, with some of the scenarios that we'll run through. But especially um, within the IT, having your, your your IT cared for in your business by a mm. professional, set up mm. safely, set up securely, um, it, it allows you to focus more on running your business um, while we focus on your business being safe, secure, and connected. Okay. Well, it's, that's another great segue. We're going to get into what we are launching and why we've gathered everyone. I know you're all excited about it. I am. Let's... But, I've just had a great question in um, which I want to. Tava Singh um, has asked the question, being a startup, our company can't currently afford to offer both company-owned and guest Wi-Fi. Is it wise to allow customers access to our business Wi-Fi? Or do we just say, tsk, use your phone. <laughs> no, you don't use my Wi-Fi. It's my data. What do you think? Yeah. Who's going to take that for me? So, so I'll take that question, and and I think you know, thank you very much, Ntabi Singh, for the question. Um, short answer: No, <laughs> not wise to allow your guests on your on your business Wi-Fi. Um, and again, we're going to go into it a little bit later uh, when we look at the packages and we look at what is included uh, when we when we talk managed services from Logicalis. What is included in that? Um, and part of the security is having those two separate Wi-Fi. So having a business SSID and a guest SSID, you know, keeping okay. your, your guests secure and only access to certain amount of, and you know, that's what's nice um, when Pi will, Pi will pick up on it later on, on the, the dashboard, the Meraki dashboard and how everything's run. But having those two separate and allowing certain individuals allowed to connect to certain parts of your network um, and that's con and that's all about controlling within your guest wi-fi and okay. how that is so different your to your business the short the short the long and the short answer to Taba Singh is if you are a startup rather explain to them that you're a startup and you've got to keep your network secure for your absolutely your customers don't let them in and um, uh, rather find a provider who can make it affordable for you to have the two separate segregated networks. Absolutely. That's, I've got it. Okay, and Taba saying, I hope that answers for you. You don't let some strange um, man into your bedroom. Don't let them <laughs> in there. You've got to know who they are, and it's all about identity management. So, and so why we'll, did hmm? No, no. Yeah, no. sorry. I, so I think we're going to add again. A bit uh, as as we ca carry on with the the webinar, a little no, bit later we'll add Let, on. Let's let's get into it. Don't tell them what we're going to tell them. Let's tell them. <laughs> what are you launching? Why have you you gathered us here, Claudia? Why have you taken Pi away from her exciting creative job, and and why are you giving us this time? Thanks, Daniel. So, guys, we we launching a Meraki managed services. So we've got three packages um, that we're launching together from Logicala South Africa together with Cisco Meraki. Um, and in short, these three packages are a smart Wi-Fi solution, a business in a box solution, and a security SD-WAN solution. So these three, basically what you're getting is you're paying a monthly subscription. So you're not worried about your CapEx expenditure. It becomes an mm -hmm. operating expenditure. Pay Logicala a monthly fee, you get on the smart Wi-Fi package, you're getting three access points uh, with three-year licensing, full 24-7 managed services monitoring from Logicola South Africa um, for your business. The IT function gets completely taken over by Logicalis. There's no need to worry about setting it up. There's no need for you to worry about troubleshooting around having anybody in your business look after those packages. Um, and all the managed services is, is covered by Logicalis. Um, if we look at the security SD-WAN package, there we're utilizing a Meraki MX security appliance with a three-year security license. Again, looking completely to take over that security function, keeping your business completely secure uh, away from threats. There's advanced malware protection from Cisco, um, all these fancy security terms that uh, probably most people won't understand. But again, your business is just keeping safe and secure. And then the last package would be your business in a box, which I would say essentially is a combination between the two, giving you access to a, a, a Meraki a security appliance, as well as your Meraki access points 
to combine the, the, the beauty of Meraki security and the access points. And, and again, guys, this is all controlled on a cloud network. Mm. Um, there's a massive Meraki dashboard where everything's controlled. Um, and we take over that, that IT function. So that becomes a worry that something that you don't have to worry about. And again, you can focus on actually your day-to-day -day running of your business, your day-to-day -day tasks and expanding your business. Um, and as we mentioned earlier, you have these massive enterprise companies that have dedicated IT support staff and dedicated teams. And you guys don't have to worry about this IT function. So essentially what you're doing is if I'm looking around my house right now and trying to think of an analogy, um, not the Wi-Fi that I'm using, but uh, it, the lights that are on here, you'll make sure that my house is ready to move in and the lights are on at all times. I don't have to worry about changing bulbs. I don't have to worry. I just turn off and on and I go and I can work wherever I want to. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so everything's man monitored by us. So, so managed services in this context is the only thing the customer then has to bring is their desktop or their laptops and the applications. You've got everything else for them. Absolutely. And this is, again, where I talk oh, to, you to the, the wonderful helpful. question um, from Tabi saying, thank you again very much. So this is what our managed services will include, right? Setting up of a business SSID and a guest SSID. We are allowed so what to is do an that. SSID? So SSID will basically be your network connectivity for your... Um, okay. Pi, have I 13. lost... I lost Claudia. I lost you there. I asked you a tough question. Sorry about that, man. Okay. Are you back there, Claudia? Can you hear me, Daniel? I can. Perfect. So sorry about that. Um, mm. So your business SSID essentially is just the, the name of the network and, and the two separate networks that you'll have uh, at your business. So having a business network and a guest network allows Pai, are you there? Yeah, absolutely. I think talk about the struggles of load shedding mm. and, and working from anywhere, right? I'm <laughs> so I'll, you. I'll, I'll take that, uh, Dan. Essentially, awesome. to and Tabi Singh's point, um, we essentially always want to have uh, two separate networks running from a wireless perspective. Um, that's for a host of reasons, but mainly a security uh, function, right? We don't want to okay. have um, outsiders joining our business Wi-Fi and having um, you know, access to... Uh, critical data, et cetera. Um, and with the Meraki solution, what we're actually able to do, which is uh, quite a good selling point, is um, rate limiting users um, specifically on, on our guest uh, uh, Wi-Fi. What this means for the okay. end customer is, you know, we always there's always Bob in the corner that's watching YouTube videos, right, all the time. And we can't get um, sales reports in or we can't get commission sheets in because the Wi-Fi is slow, the connectivity is slow, etc. What we're able to do with this uh, Meraki Wi-Fi solution is actually rate limit Bob. So on 100 meg line, we give Bob 5 megs and Bob can only function at 5 megs. Great um, yeah. use case for schools, right? We also don't want um, you know, kids on, on laptops and tablets um, using the internet for, for videos or whatever, Coco Melon, et cetera, we want them to be focused on the curriculum. So um, a very cool way in which we can rate limit uh, users. And you can do this from a business perspective as well within your business SSID, right? So you want your CEO when they come down from Cape Town to have the best possible Wi-Fi experience as the IT manager. So we rate limit everybody else for that week. And it looks like you're doing a great job as an IT manager, which you are. But essentially, in this case, Logicalis will be um, managing that for you. So a win-win really from, from a business perspective and, and essentially enabling your, your employees and users um, to have a great user experience. Brilliant. Uh, it's probably worthwhile having a look at the, the actual nuts and bolts of the offering, Pi. And, and you've spoken about a single pane of glass the whole time. That's essentially what Claudio's team is going to use to manage my business. Um, is that really complicated? I mean, am I at risk that he's going to overcomplicate my business and, and I'm never going to be able to understand what's going on if I take this? Or is it, is it quite a simple um, like setup? 
Awesome. Great question, Daniel. Um, Claudio, if you don't mind pulling up slide number nine, that would be great, just so everybody can see our entire portfolio. But as mentioned, our motto and our aim as Meraki is to simplify everything. And how we do this is through our Meraki dashboard. And it's the power of the platform that really make our solutions, um, you know, world class. We are currently the only um, technology in the world that offers a full stack um, end to end approach. What I mean by that is we do everything from your wireless LAN, your switching, your security, SD-WAN, smart cameras, IoT devices, mobile device management. Um, so literally everything end to end uh, from a business perspective um, you can find with Meraki. Now, why is this important for you as, as a small business, right? We find that a lot of IT managers or small businesses are trying to manage multiple different technologies. And what do we end up doing? We end up spending more money to go and buy software to enable us to manage these multiple technologies. With us, we are a full stack, right? So anything that you require from a networking perspective, um, Logicalis has bundled for you to make that consumable and, and to make it as easily consumable as possible for you as an end customer. Awesome. Awesome. So it looks like it, it's pretty comprehensive that you're giving to Claudio. So it must be really expensive. How can we afford it and still pay this petrol that you speak of, Claudio? So Daniel, this is the the, the awesome thing and, and why we've brought this as a, as a managed service. Um, small, medium businesses don't have that massive capital expenditure, right? And we've taken this model and put it on a monthly expenditure so that it's now coming off your operating expenses. You only have to worry about it every month. Um, We've utilized our backbone of managed services, taken that with the awesome use of the Meraki platform, which Pi is just so thank you very much for explaining all of that, Pi. We've taken the use of the Meraki platform together with us and put it as a as a, a monthly expense. So it actually you don't actually worry. And utilizing our Logicalis um, financing house, we then utilize the cost over three years with a three-year license, which makes that monthly cost really, really affordable. Wow. Okay. So we, we can then look at, at the one that best suits us. I can upgrade if, uh, if I go in a little bit conservative or am I uh, stuck in that for that entire absolutely. time? No, absolutely. So we put a lot of add-ons on the packages. So, you know, as okay. much as everyone would think that the packages are, are standard or mm. are, are secure mm. on one type of level, depending on your business, depending how big your business is, if you've got lots of, of, um, lots of employees or maybe you have mm. <clears throat> lots of customers coming in every day we can definitely mm. upgrade add additional access points if we need more security appliances we can increase the amount of security appliances to your business and i think the one thing that no one really thinks about or, or maybe not thinks about but you know goes straight over their head is bring your own device so mm. you've got someone that comes into the office uh, mm. you've you, you've set up your access points to connect to 20 people because you've got 20 employees um, and you forget the fact that I'm coming into the office. I'm bringing my phone, my work laptop. I've got an iPad that I need to download series for when there's load shedding. I've got <laughs> a, a, a watch that I need to connect to the internet so I get my discovery points. I've got yeah. a Kindle so that I can read when I'm at the beach sure. on holiday. And there's, there's already six devices that I'm connecting as one person to the network. So if you may be a customer with a lot of bring your own device and you've got a lot of employees that work on multiple devices day in and day out, you're going to need to increase the amount of capacity and increase those access points. And again, okay. we're monitoring the devices. So as we add devices on, you're not getting uh, your monthly expenditure is not getting that much more expensive because we're monitoring you on that single pane of glass. Thanks to Meraki. Brilliant. You spoke in the, in the, in the, the preparation. So for all the audience members, I'm a bit slower than most. So um, Claudio spoke about three different scenarios, just so I could understand them. And we spoke about Grace, George, and Jane. Uh, can you talk me through the practicalities of what problems you are solving? So, you know, we, we've got, I want to hear real business here. What, what scenarios, Absolutely. when should people come to you? Absolutely. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Daniel. So if we can talk about, you mentioned now, so Grace. So we have Grace in scenario one. So Grace's desk is, imagine, in the very far corner of the office. 
Um, her webcam keeps stopping, keeps cutting out during conference calls. Uh, her calls keep dropping. She's blurry. So she doesn't get enough coverage from her Wi-Fi network. So the solution to that would be the Logicola Smart Wi-Fi. So this enables Grace to have a smart, uh, crisp sound network, all her video conference meetings she's connected to, while keeping the rest of the business connected um, and also thriving at a high performance. So she's not having to move from her desk to sit in the conference room or go sit next to the CEO's office. But wherever she is in the corner of her offices, she's getting her beautiful crisp connection and staying available for all of these these meetings with her video up i mean a lot of people are working from home a lot of people are, are, are at the offices so we rely a lot on video meetings so having that smart wi-fi enables her to have coverage across the whole office so if she's in the corner if she's in the boardroom even if she's in the kitchen she's completely covered and, and getting that fast and secure network excellent excellent that makes a lot of sense and, and then the second type of person you would look for? So second scenario would be someone like George. So we've, we've called George for scenario two. Um, George works from the office and he connects to the corporate Wi-Fi. But George also receives a lot of emails saying he's won a million rand in the lotto and all he needs to do is give in his login details and he's <laughs> won this in this competition. So he's constantly getting... I've had that, but it's usually, it's usually about making extensions to my anatomy. I don't know why, but I get those <laughs> ones all the time. Uh, we, I think we, we all get different emails. I mean, I must say I'm on the, the lotto receiving emails. So <laughs> but, um, you know, George gets these emails and... Sometimes he believes him. He thinks he's won. So now he's constantly introducing viruses into the network. Um, <laughs> Click, by click fishing. He's fishing. Exactly. He's fishing. As you click accept, as you open up different documents, you're just adding all of these viruses in. So with the, the, the Logicala smart Wi-Fi and the smart SD-WAN solution, um, mm. you stay protected and connected against the latest cyber threats. Um, you know, utilizing that Meraki security appliance. So we said earlier it's the Meraki MX appliance. Utilizing that appliance, you're making sure that the latest viruses don't crash your network. And you're keeping yeah. up to date with the latest threats, even the, the latest advanced But threats. I don't have to worry about that. Claudia is None of that's worried about, worry that. about that. Logicalis so, has got I, all of that covered on the dashboard. Everything's up to date. And we're pr constantly updating the threats. And that's filtering through your network via the cloud. And are you giving me any reporting in to show me that I've got an idiot user that's uh, oh, not that any of our guests are, but I'm talking about <laughs> myself, yeah? Clicking on those phishing links? Absolutely. Absolutely. So if we look, and, and earlier I was sharing the slide of, of, you know, what the managed services would include. Mm. So you're getting availability, availability, monitoring and response. You're getting automated monthly usage reporting. You've got a service okay. desk function, eight hours a day, five days a week. You've got 24 by 7 fault reporting, which means 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you can report faults. And then you've got reactive support. So okay. once a threat's picked up within your network, our team is working immediately to try and get rid of that threat. Awesome. So, um, uh, Pai, you've been quiet for a bit. He has a tough question. Why do you think Logicalis selected Meraki as the backbone for this managed service offering? Uh, what makes you so special? Oh, I've lost Pi. You see, you ask a tough question and they disappear. <laughs> it's, uh, why, why do you want to answer that, Claudio? Why did yeah, you select absolutely. Um, Pi? And then I've got a, while we wait for uh, Pi to come back, I've got a question from the floor, which says, what happens after three years? Is the device obsolete, paid up? Do the, the clients get it? I mean, how does yep. that work? <clears throat> Absolutely. So the beautiful thing about the Meraki licensing model is we have uh, access to a function that they call plug and play, where essentially you can take that device out the box, plug it in and use it. Um, and then once you have one device, you have one license. Um, the licensing model is extremely easy to understand. It comes with a full return process. So if anything goes wrong with the device, we can handle the return. We'll come collect it from you within a week, we'll return it and give you a brand new device. So those devices have a long lifespan, not just only three years. We've done the three-year because of the licensing model, right? Okay. So with your licensing on Meraki, you have options of a one-year, three-year, or five-year license. So we can take the three years. At the end of the three years, the device is fully paid up. Um, so if you want, would like to continue that for the following three years, it only becomes a cost of your license. 
which okay. is very small portion compared to the hardware, and then the managed services cost from Logic Carlos. The device's okay. uh, reliability and use is amazing. They've got full lifetime warranty. So as long as you've got that license, even if you extend it over three years and another three years and you're still paying for that license, if something has to go wrong with that switch, Meraki will replace it free of charge. Oh, amazing. So what we do is we just, we don't worry about upgrades. That's your issue. We don't worry about changing the system. That's your issue. We don't, Absolutely. all we've got to do is keep our contract going and we'll be covered. Absolutely. So and I mean, where we, does the business get, in, where does the business get uh, um, involved in? It's from the application layer up. Yeah. So I must so, look after my call center. I must look after my my business application, my invoicing, my general ledger, those sorts of things. The rest, you saying you're going to take care of? Yes. So wow. your day to day business functions keep going as normal, but now you don't have to have the worry of someone monitoring that IT network for you. Um, we'll make sure we have full connectivity. And the beautiful thing about the Meraki dashboard is, you know from our network operation center and our security operation center which we have in uh, santon in our in our joburg office where we have a dedicated support team monitoring this um, meraki platform that single pane of glass allows us to see the health of your appliances it allows us to see who's connected at what time the device name their ip address we can get all that information and we can monitor who's connected, why they're connected, how long have they been connected for, and you just wow. worry about your business function. If we see a switch's so, health is, is declining, we can, or access points health is declining, or your security appliance, we can actually pick up why that health is declining and do cloud-based troubleshooting to try and yeah, figure out how yeah. we can improve that for the future. Excellent. So uh, I can see, Pai, you you back with us. Um, why, mm, I want to change the way I ask this is, how did you sell to Claudia that he should build his business on Meraki's backbone? Uh, how did you win this deal? <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Um, Claudio, if you don't mind bringing up uh, slide 10, that would be great. Absolutely I think what's fine. quite key um, with our platform, thanks to Claudio, um, what's quite key with our platform is being able to proactively monitor um, end customer networks from wherever you sit, right? So. If I put that into context for our um, SMMEs uh, on call, essentially you could sit anywhere in the world and still be a view of what your network looks like, whether you had two sites or 200 sites. And I think that is quite key in terms of zero touch provisioning. Um, and what we offer, and, and again, to put this into perspective for you, what we're offering from a cloud managed network perspective is for you as a small business owner, um, to be able to, to, you know, purchase a service like we do with Netflix and we don't really care, you know, where that data is sitting in the background, et cetera. We just essentially want to log in and watch our series. This is exactly what um, Logicalis provides to you as the end customer, right? Regardless of how many sites you have, you can have those sites up and running uh, within a matter of hours or in a matter of minutes. And the reason we're able to do this to um, Daniel's earlier question around, you know, Cisco in a dark room and, and lots of cables. Um, we actually provide the complete opposite, right? So what, we, what do we mean by zero touch provisioning? We mean that once you purchase these devices, those devices can be provisioned um, to be up and running on your network so that once it gets to your site, again, you don't need to be a CCIE or, a, or IT boffin. All you need to do is get, um, you know, give this device power, ET call home, it downloads its configurations, which Roger Carlos will do on your behalf. Um, and essentially, you've got a fully fledged network, right? And to put that into perspective for you, um, we were able to get 150 uh, libraries in the Eastern Cape up and running in two and a half hours. Now, if you look wow. at a traditional way of getting that business up and running or those sites up and running, that would simply traditionally mean that you sent an engineer to every single one of those sites to go and plug devices in. We are able to simplify that process through templates. We don't have any pre-staging or on-site configuration. All of that is done in the cloud. Um, so that when we ship those devices to you, um, essentially you give that, that um, device power and you have a fully fledged uh, network. So very much an unbox and plug in uh, type of solution, which I think is quite key for the SME market, because again, you don't want to be um, spending money on, uh, you know, uh, IT, uh, dedicated mm -hmm. IT teams in order to do this for you. 
Um, take mm. it back to the Netflix scenario. You want to pay a monthly fee and just be able to watch whatever series you want to watch. In your case, run your business and meet those business outcomes. Wow. I, I, I really like that. The whole thing that I'm seeing here is ease of use so I don't have to worry about another complex uh, layer above my business. I can focus on business. If we put this partnership together, Logic Carlos, who's looking after the managed services, Meraki, who's the technology backbone, how do customers who are really skeptical know that they can trust this, this partnership? This is not a fly-by-night where <laughs> you guys have got together just because um, you know Claudio looked vulnerable and Pi took advantage. Uh, where is this partnership going? Thanks, I guess Daniel. that's for you, yeah, Claudia. Yeah, yeah, no, thanks. So, so you know, and, and um, one thing that we we want to make mention of is, you know, Meraki was a a, a company that actually st started on its own, and and Cisco uh, Cisco Systems happened to buy Meraki out, and now Meraki is its own brand within the Cisco uh, portfolio, um, and Logicalis actually has a global gold partnership with Cisco. Um, you know, and we have skills and partnerships all around the world. We mentioned earlier about our global footprint with our 27 uh, mm -hmm. offices worldwide uh, in 27 countries. And, you know, that that global gold partnership gives us access to to resources, engineers, everything worldwide with the best and, and, and absolutely needed uh, engineering skills and, and um, techniques and possibilities that we can just enable these customers and help them. Mm. Awesome. If you had a billboard with the top three reasons to consider your managed services, what would you what would you have over the N one busy billboard? What would your top <laughs> three reasons be? Why should people come to you, Claudia? Absolutely, I already mentioned one of them would be the global gold partnership with Cisco. I think that's a feat that you know not a lot of people have. Um, mm. Second would be our uh, network operating center and security operating center that works. 24 7 365 for the customer's benefit and then again i'll follow the sun support staff so meraki utilizes follow the sun which if you can imagine is a 24 7 365 support desk with um network and data centers around the world that there's no downtime with with support so that means we just have absolutely every way of keeping our customers completely connected and focused on themselves running their businesses um, while we worry about the rest. Awesome. I like that. And and if you had to give us your throw at this pie, what do you think that you would be speaking to an owner of a business to saying, um, uh, come in here? So I've got one and it's, and it's a powerful one and it would have a hashtag and it would say, once you go full stack, you don't go back because essentially oh you have <laughs> an access point and a switch and a firewall and an IoT device and a security camera. Um, there really isn't another technology that, um, you know, can compete uh, from a full stack perspective. Um, Absolutely. Of course, they're all, uh, you know, great in their own right from a Wi-Fi perspective or a SASC perspective or an SD-WAN perspective. But when we look at everything holistically, um, powered by the Meraki platform, you really won't go back once you go full stack. So that would be my my slogan, and uh, we should actually, uh, you know, take that up at a Meraki. You should patent call. that. <laughs> you should patent that. I think you should do that. I've, I've got a, a really cool question from Roger, um, who says, uh, another question is cross-border inclusion, say South Africa to Botswana. How does the device accommodate cross-border? It's a really good question. Thanks, Roger. Absolutely. Claudia, go. Yeah, so look, I don't think there's any any limitation to the Meraki appliances. I think that, and that, I mean, you know, you asked Pi earlier, why did we partner with them? Meraki is such an easy to use and amazing appliance. You know, going cross border, we've done deployments with customers through Angola, through Nigeria, Ghana, Mozambique. You know, these devices have have no, and they they utilized. I mean, Pi made made mention earlier that they did 150 libraries in the Eastern Cape. I know that's not cross border, but I mean to get all of those libraries to talk to each other and to work with, with central data centers. You know, these Meraki appliances, it's easy as that uh, zero touch deployment that Pi mentioned. It's about taking it out of the box, making sure it's connected, 
and um, you have access to your single pane of glass Meraki dashboard. Stunning. Awesome. Pai, you wanted to add to that as well. So, so uh, geographic lines, if we've got connectivity, it makes no difference to you, hey? Absolutely. So as long as that device has some power and you've got uh, some sort of some form of connectivity in whichever country you're at, as I mentioned earlier, uh, as a business owner, you know, you may have um, uh, branches in different countries. You are still able to manage, view, um, you know, everything on a uh, sort of virtually stacked approach. So you can literally, um, you know, as an IT manager, as an example, go and click on the South African office, filter down to Cape Town and understand why Susie on the fifth floor of the Cape Town office is having Wi-Fi issues, right? And is that problem between, uh, you know, the switch and the, um, the firewall, the, the switch and the AP, is it a connectivity issue? Um, and I think the really cool thing about our SD-WAN solution is our, you know, the end customer doesn't know when that um, uh, service is down because it simply just switches on to the best, better performing link uh, between uh, the two. So if you had, you know, a fiber and a microwave secondary link, um, if your microwave link is performing better because everyone in finance at your end is using that uh, fiber link, it simply automatically just uh, switches over without the end user, um, you know, being affected. So it really didn't matter where in the world um, you sat, we were able to to um, connect you and extend that that network for you. And it's such an important point uh, um, that, uh, let me just get his name again, that Roger brings up, is that small business doesn't mean small geography, a small footprint. It just means that we don't have the trapping of the big businesses. So we're agile, we're out there, we're making money. This launch is now happening, Claudia. There's no going back. You and Pi have pinned your colors to the mask. What is happening over the next 12 weeks? What does it look like? Are there any major milestones we should be aware of? I know there's a big team in the background. We've got Michelle and Tara, and they're all doing all sorts of things. What's yeah. happening? So, yeah, thanks a lot, Daniel. And I mean, you know, it's really, really exciting for us. It's been lots of lots of hard work. We've been trying to get this going for a long time. So the next 12 weeks, if I thought these last few weeks were, 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 were busy, the next 12 are going to be even more busier. We're planning an, an online launch event for the customers where we can actually utilize the Meraki dashboard, give some demos. We'll have Meraki subject matter experts there. We'll have our engineers there. You know, and, and eventually, initially, this was supposed to be an online event. And I think now that things are opening up, we might be able to do an in-person event or maybe even two, one in Cape Town and one in Joburg, um, just to get access to customers to see the power of that Meraki dashboard live and in person and see how we can actually monitor these things so within the next 12 months we're going to focus on that launch event um with all the customers and then also securing stock um making sure that we have enough stock to to launch this event and make sure that we can supply our customers uh, without a, a shadow of a doubt speaking as a salesman may you run out of stock come on <laughs> man may they be beating down the doors Paya, you don't work with uh, um, Claudio. You're in your own entity. And this is a constant change innovation environment. Cisco never stands still. Are there any technical releases which are really interesting that are coming later in the year that, that may affect Claudio and, and heighten his service or we should be aware of? I'm so glad you asked because there are two. Um, one's already happened and one's been recently announced. Um, the first one to Emma's security question is um, we actually have now uh, released a secure access service edge and everyone's probably uh, heard the coined term SASE from a Gartner perspective. What that means is we've taken the building blocks of security. So cloud security through, um, you know, Cisco Umbrella. Um, we've taken SD-WAN through either Viptela or the Meraki solution, Zero Trust network access through Duo, and then our observability um, product through Thousand Eyes. And we've actually bundled this, instead of purchasing four separate licenses, again, making this simple and secure, we've actually bundled that into one SASE bundle SKU. So when you order this for your business, you would order one, one uh, SASE bundle SKU, which encompasses these four um, components from a security perspective. And then I did mention something that was recently announced at Cisco Live a couple of weeks ago, and that is cloud management for Catalyst. This is going to be an absolute game changer for, um, you know, the, any business on, you know, whether it's small, medium, enterprise, et cetera. Um, essentially, what we've done is we've taken the best from a cloud networking world 
And we've merged it into the best from a networking world with Cisco. So Meraki and Cisco have merged to provide our cloud dashboard capabilities on your catalyst uh, switches. So that's going to be um, you know, quite an quite a exciting thing to, uh, to look forward to uh, in the future. Wow. Awesome. And that term SASE is becoming more and more, it's not S-A-S-S-Y, which is what I like to be, but it's, it's more S-A-S-E, a new security framework that we're looking at. For all of our um, uh, guests on here, it shouldn't impact you. You shouldn't learn about that. That's where Claudio should be. That's where Pi should be. And that's why you're going to be paying for the service that they can worry about this. Um, Claudio, where do we go and find out more about this man Meraki managed service offering? And do you go out to customers as well? Awesome. Thanks a lot, Daniel. Yeah. So, guys, info at za.logicalis.com. Um, pop a mail there. That goes straight to our team. They'll be able to help and assist. Um, we can post it in the in the chat, I think. Um, yep. And again, just on our on our website, reach out to us on LinkedIn, um, Logicalis website. There's lots of email addresses, um, lots of ways. And yes, we do. We'll come see you to the customers. We'll come to your your offices. Um, we've got dedicated IT teams. We've got solution architects. We've got network architects. Uh, we can come on site, make sure that we can tailor make the solution for your business to help your business succeed as as much as possible uh, with the help of Logicalis and with the help of the Meraki team. Brilliant. Thank you very much. We've got four minutes left. I'm going to round up with uh, a pie. I'm going to ask you one more question. What question uh, did I miss? What would you have liked me to have asked you regarding the way forward or regarding the solution? I think um, you've done a great job, Dan. So there isn't anything that you've actually left out. So thank you very much. Um, what I do want to leave everybody with is, you know, just remember the, the ease of use across uh, you know, a full stack approach. Um, your requirement now may be Wi-Fi, or it may just be SD WAN. But when you look at your your solution and your business holistically, um, have a look at the Meraki uh, full stack approach and, and being able to, um, you know, have everything on a single pane of dash, a uh, single pane of glass on our dashboard um, for Logicalis to, you know, provide you with the stats so you can see what's happening on your business as opposed to trying to deal with multiple technologies and making them all sync and work together. Awesome. Uh, Roger Naidu gets uh, award for lead of the day. Thank you, Roger. <laughs> your, your contribution has been superb. And then remember, don't be a full stack. So don't try and build your own little house of cards. Go full stack. Once you've gone full stack, you won't go back. <laughs> Claudio, what have you got for me um, uh, as a wrap up? What didn't I ask that you would have liked to have touched on? Um, so Daniel, also again, what Pai I think said it very well. I think you've done a great job. Um, we've covered a lot of aspects oh, of this, you. and I, you know, I, I, I try and keep it as as easy to understand and as as easy to to comprehend as possible without going into the deep technicalities. Because at the end of the day, those deep technicalities are what we here to take over and what we here to focus on. Um, as logic callers, our support teams and our solutions architects are going to worry about all that deep technical stuff. Um, in the, that happens in the back end, the understanding and the monitoring and all the A's and B's and T's and I's of, of IT. Um, and again, all you need to worry about as, as your business is that you guys can continue doing business as usual and actually dedicate more time to your business while we focus on keeping your IT up and running and keeping you connected safe and securely. Excellent. Thank you. Well, from me, good luck with the launch. It's always exciting to see people innovating. Managed services is easy to put on a logo and on a poster. It's difficult to do because it's all about experience versus expectation. And I hope that you get the two right. If you don't, I'm hoping that the customers are brave enough to tell you so that you can continue improving. So just from us um, on, on our side for facilitating this, just good luck with going forward. The next 12 weeks, remember, get going, then get good. Let's see you getting out there. And for your first customers, brilliant. Uh, good luck for this. I hope it goes very well. Carrie, that's uh, a wrap from me, Daniel Robus. I'm uh, going to hand it back to you in the dark. So thanks again, guys, for attending today.